Fearing death, Assange releases password to large cache of Hillary files. It is suspected by some that failed Democrat nominee Hillary Clinton could be on the verge of being totally exposed by the release of compromising and revealing files held by WikiLeaks based upon the recent posting of a rather cryptic set of letters and numbers on Twitter by founder Julian Assange. Clinton was recently in Australia to promote her book, What Happened About the 2016 Election, and reiterated her belief that WikiLeaks and Assange, who she ter uh, termed a nihilistic opportunist, quote, who uh, does the bidding of a dictator, <laughs> according to the International Business Times, we're in uh, league with Russia and partially to blame for her electoral loss. Assange replied via Twitter, WikiLeaks has a pristine record for accuracy. Hillary Rodham Clinton is not a credible person. The primary cause of her downfall was her own Machiavellian scheme to elevate Mr. Trump, Pied Piper. The tweet contained a link to Clinton's interview, as well as a link to the latest WikiLeaks dump, exposing Russian interests. Less than 20 minutes later, Assange then tweeted what may, uh, many believe is an encryption code, or dead man's switch, that would ensure the release of certain files by third parties or even automatically by a computer program in the event of his being detained or killed prior to his own uh, de uh, determination of when to release such files. That's probably the encrypted message. About an hour and a half later, Assange posted one more tweet regarding Clinton that some suspect hinted at what uh, the prior encryption code could be the key to unlock. There's something wrong with Hillary Clinton. It is not just her constant lying. It is not just that she throws off menacing glares and seethes thwarted entitlement. Watch closely. Something much darker rides along with it. A cold creepiness rarely seen, Assange tweeted. Of course, the posting of an encryption code that could possibly unlock secret files revealing damning information about Hillary Clinton has fueled conspiracies, but the IB Times noted that Assange had posted, uh, posted such encryption codes several times in the past as a sort of insurance safeguard prior to a massive document dump. Interestingly, a site known as the Duran documented a series of tweets from Fox News host Sean Hannity in reference to Assange, most notably one week prior to Assange's cryptic tweet that read, T minus seven and counting tick tock, quite possibly a knowing reference to an upcoming document dump. It is thought that any sort of Clinton-related document dump by WikiLeaks could potentially contain some of the thousands of deleted emails uh, from her illicit private server that she refused to turn over to investigators or perhaps expose her own connections to Russia that would utterly undermine the liberal media's Trump-Russia collusion narrative. We could find out soon one way or another. Please share this on Facebook and Twitter so everyone can see that Julian Assange tweeted about Hillary Clinton that has many people expecting a WikiLeaks document dump in the near future. Absolutely, that's it. These are encryptions probably to these... Uh, uh, files. <laughs> and and Hillary would know. She's shaking in her pants, but again, fearing death, right? Assange releases the password 
too large cachet of Hillary files. Wow, it gets interesting. Let's uh, let's wait. Maybe he's going to uh, give us some uh, real, real, real good revelation. I love snow globes. Tell me about it. Um, this is when I was president. <laughs> Sharknado 3. It is my great honor to present the country's highest civilian commendation, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, to Finley Allen Shepard. I remember it. I was eaten by a shark in 10 seconds. You were president. <laughs> this is Lester Williams reporting live from Orlando. Was that a precursor to anything? Mm, maybe. We'll see. But um, it was fun, right? I got to shoot guns and run and do stunts. And I was told that you would only do it on one condition. Yeah, that um, I wasn't eaten, uh, that I, I lived, right? <laughs> Why was that important to you? Because I want to come back and do it again. I was playing president. I mean, if there's any role you can bring back, being president has got to be it, right? Or you could run. Or I could run. I don't know which would be tougher, Sharknado. <laughs> Ever enter your mind? Yeah, of course. Um, That's a big statement. Well, I mean... It, Most people don't say, of course. Yeah, well, I get asked, you know, 100 times a day, and... You know, I've always been very apolitical until this past election in 2016. I've, I've avoided it. I think this election kind of just changed my attitude towards it. Because initially, you liked Trump. Yeah, I did. Well, I didn't agree with a lot of his positions, and I told him so, but I liked the fact that he was honest, outspoken, that he wasn't, like I told him, a Stepford candidate. Um, I thought all those things were, were positive. I think it, we're going into an era where people want somebody who comes up with solutions. I think we're going into a time where you need somebody who can connect to people and relate to people at, at a base level and appreciate what they're going through. And I, and I think I qualify on each of those. Now, whether or not I'll do it, it's a big decision. So this is something you're considering? I, considering, yes. Made a, a decision far from it. How does your family feel about it? My kids love it. My wife hates it. So, she hates it? Yeah. And so that's, that's the influencing factor as well. I mean, my family is everything to me. If she says no, do you not? We have a discussion. It just depends on, <laughs> it just, it just depends on the circumstances. That is an alpha response. Right? Yeah. <laughs> she anywhere? Is she? Yeah. You kind of started this by, um, I, I don't know whether it's audacious or snarky, but saying you could kick Hillary Clinton's ass and Donald Trump's ass yeah. if you decided to run. That was being snarky and, and having fun, right? There's, there's still a point of me, you know, there's, there's a part of Did me Did you that, believe it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm competitive and maybe a little bit arrogant, but President Trump has a great following, and they're not going to turn on him. Why did you? Why did I? Because w exactly what I told him. I was really concerned about a candidate becoming president that was not making the effort to learn the issues. I would try to talk to him. I, I'm confused. Are you a Democrat or Republican? I'm, in, I'm fiercely independent. But if you run, you're going to have to run one or the other. Um, maybe. Well, if you had to choose, what would you choose? Probably Republican. How come? Because I think there's a place for um, somebody who is socially a centrist, but I'm, I'm very fiscally conservative. But I think there's better ways now to make government smaller than the old traditional Republican ways. Again, using technology. You know, government as a service can have a dramatic impact on how we live our lives. If you don't understand technology, and you don't understand the impact on jobs that technology is going is having and will continue to have, then you're going to run into some severe roadblocks. You sound like a candidate. You know, it's I'm, I'm a concerned American citizen. Oh, uh, right? so am I, but I'm not a candidate. But you I, sound like one. I have lots of time to focus on, on trying to understand issues. And so, you know, I wouldn't run unless I have solutions. If I have solutions, then I have something to offer. If I don't, you won't see me anywhere near being a politician. I like you a lot. But that was BS because, <laughs> well, it was BS because you have basically, done, your whole life has been about solutions. Yeah. And this is no different. So it seems to me that you're not just throwing your hands up in the air. You have an idea on how things well, should I'm be. Because I'm well, concerned. I understand that. But if you have ideas on what the solutions are, then you've crossed that line and you're going to run. No, not necessarily, not necessarily right? Because healthcare, to give you a perfect example, I think I have something that can be repeal and replace and serve and deal and cover 100 percent of the people that otherwise have to buy okay, individual you're, make, you're making my point but but i don't have to run in order to introduce it i have you to, just said that if you come up with solutions then i it think i said i think i don't think i didn't say i have yet right because there's still a lot of work to be done for chronic illnesses and serious and life-threatening illnesses that should be that's a risk that should be shared by all of us 
and you know that should be a right for coverage scale of one to ten ten being you're running where are you right now four no four yeah if your wife says yes where are you five <laughs>